In this video, I will teach you about operators in quantum mechanics and how they can be applied to both bras and kets. Along the way, I will also give you intuition on why these operators are used to represent observables. By the end of this video, you will understand exactly how to manipulate operators, bras, and kets in the following way. To start off, I'd like to remind you that one of the axioms of quantum mechanics is that the observables of a physical system are described by self-adjoint linear operators on a Hilbert space. And remember, observables are any physical property that can be measured. A few of the most common examples are energy, momentum, position, and spin. For each of these, we will need to find a unique operator that maps from one observable state to another. These operators will need to be self-adjoint. So any given operator will be equal to its adjoint. And they must satisfy the two criteria of being linear. This axiom, therefore, tells us that for whatever physical system we have, if we desire to measure an observable, then the way to describe this process of measuring it in quantum theory is to construct a unique self-adjoint linear operator for it. So each of these observables will have their own operators associated to them. And it's important to note here that although every observable will be described by an operator, not all operators will correspond to an observable. For example, the identity operator, which I showed was equal to this expression in a previous video, just leaves a state unchanged. So it does not correspond to an observable quantity. Now, let's go through a brief example to get some intuition for just how operators can represent observables. Let's consider the electron as our physical system and its spin as the observable we are interested in. Now, you may have heard that an electron has a spin of one half. The experimental evidence for this goes all the way back to the stern gerlach experiment, which I've mentioned a couple times in earlier videos. I won't go into detail about this, but basically, if you send a silver atom into a stern gerlach apparatus, the fact that only two possibilities occur, spin up and spin down, means that the electron must be spin one half. Now before the measurement is made, the spin state of the electron can be described by the following ket. If it's then sent into the measuring apparatus, it will come out in one of these definite states, either spin z up or spin z down. So there is some process going on that takes the electron from being in this initial state to one of the final states. And it is this process that we are trying to capture with the spin operator. To be a bit more precise, this specific process is described by the operator that corresponds to the spin z observable. And in the Hilbert space of all possible states or kets of our system, this operator acts on the initial ket and transforms it into one of the final kets. In general, that is what every operator in quantum mechanics will do. And if the initial state is an eigenvector, then the final state will be the same state scaled by its eigenvalue. So to sum up this step, an operator will always act on a ket from the left side and produce another ket. And if the ket is an eigenvector, then it will satisfy this specific equation. Okay, so what about bras? Can operators act on them? Remember, every Hilbert space of kets will have an associated dual space of bras. It turns out that any operator can also be applied to a bra to produce another bra. In this case, we will write the operator as its adjoint and it will always act on the bra from the right. And if you act on the bra that is dual to an eigenvector in the Hilbert space, then it will also be an eigenvector in the dual space with an eigenvalue that is the complex conjugate of the eigenvalue in the Hilbert space. And in general, these eigenvectors will be called eigenkets or eigenbras, depending on which space they happen to be living in. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to discuss is how operators can be added or multiplied. In general, if you have three operators, A, B, and C, the order you add them together does not matter. So addition of operators is both associative and commutative. However, when multiplying operators, multiplication is associative but in general, it is not commutative. The associativity of operators means that if you apply an operator B to a ket first and then apply the operator A, this is the same as forming a new operator AB and then applying it to the ket. So all three of these expressions are equivalent and turn out to be useful in various circumstances. 
The same thing can also be done with operators acting on bras. Now the non-commutativity of operators seems to be a simple fact, but it actually plays a key role in the famous Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which I plan to explain in more detail in a later video in this playlist. Okay, so in earlier videos, I discussed inner products, which you'll recall can be formed by applying a bra to a ket, and it maps these to a complex number. It turns out that there is an operator we can form that looks somewhat similar, but is fundamentally different. If we simply switch the order, so we multiply a ket by a bra, then we get something called the outer product. Now this is very different than the inner product. The inner product is just a map that produces a number. The outer product, on the other hand, is an operator. So it can be applied to a ket, and it produces another ket. Though it may seem like a simple operator, it will come in handy in a lot of quantum mechanics problems you might encounter. Now, we'll finish by using what we have learned so far to produce a very useful expression relating operators, bras, and kets. We'll begin by applying an operator A to a ket. Remember, this will just produce another ket. So we can apply a bra to this new ket to form an inner product. And we can write it in a more compact notation as follows. Next, we will apply the adjoint of A to the bra that is dual to the ket we just used. And since this is just another bra, we can apply it to a ket to form an inner product once again. And if we apply it to the ket phi, for which the bra phi is dual, then we can make these expressions equal by taking the complex conjugate. This just follows from the definition of an inner product. And since any operator we deal with will be self-adjoint, we can replace a dagger with a and get the following equality. This is another one of those expressions that seems simple, but will actually come in handy in lots of situations. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and now have a better understanding of quantum operators and how they can be applied to bras and ket.